Our gospel for today comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, and it's found on page 1 of the New Testament. Here's the good news for this day. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For he observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to be shepherd, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary's mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. <clears throat> then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is our good news for this day. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know what you think of when you think of the Bethlehem star, that star that we celebrate on this Sunday of Epiphany. The star that led those wise men to find baby Jesus lying in a manger. I don't know if you kind of go to those fond memories where you picture a child either wearing or holding the star, and that's what you picture when you picture the Bethlehem star. I don't know how many of you know this, but when I was four, I was the star. <laughs> they cut out a cardboard star, put glitter over all of it, cut out a hole in the middle of it and put it around my face. And I was the star for a whole three seconds until I ripped that thing off my face and walked <laughs> off stage. I was the exact four-year-old kid you imagined me to be. I don't know if when you think of the Bethlehem star, you think of our son, but a new one in, in perhaps a, a far off galaxy. I don't know if you picture a comet blazing off in the distance, something that had a trajectory that they could follow. Or if you see a single meteor slowly falling towards the earth, which could potentially hurt the baby Jesus, but I didn't think about that earlier. <laughs> I don't know what you picture when you imagine the Bethlehem star, but a lot of times, people will try to find the exact date and time of Jesus' birth by going by whatever they think that thing was and trying to find some cosmic event around that time if it's a star or a asteroid or a comet finding that one that matches up with the time of his birth chinese astronomers recorded a new star in the constellation of capricorn from march to april of 5 bce and it was visible for 70 days and it was a, a nova, a nova stella, which means new star. And a nova, I'm going to read this because I, I don't actually understand it, but maybe some of you will. A nova is caused by a white dwarf gathering enough material, usually from a nearby companion in a binary system, onto its surface to raise the surface pressure high enough for a thermonuclear explosion. You got that? <laughs> 
its uh, increase in brightness was a factor of 10,000 to over 1 million, as in it was bright. So this increase to peak brightness is very rapid, uh, within a few days, while the fading away to invisibility usually took a few months. So that's why you have that 70-day window. The new star observed by the Chinese would have appeared in the east several hours before sunrise. Lots of people try to line up that star with Jesus' birth. That is it. That is the star. Other people go a different road. There's a, a time when various planets come together. They call them conjunction of planets. And at 7 BCE, there was a conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in Pisces. So some people will say that coming together would have appeared as a new star forming. So that's what those wise men saw. And even though I'll admit I, I'm always fascinated by these studies and how much we knew, we always think that people in the past knew less when we're constantly reminded about how much they knew. But I think the quest for finding out what that star truly was Someone misses the point of this story. For within this story of this star is the story that drives us all. The lure of the light for some. The distant light of hope. A better tomorrow. And then the hate of that light, let that light <coughs> for others when we let the darkness win. Think about the main characters of this story. On one side, we have those wise men who were not wise enough to bring diapers and formula and blankets, but wise nonetheless. For when they saw the light break forth in the sky, they stopped everything they were doing and took a long journey to see where that star led. And then on the other side, you have Herod, who sees the star, who learns of that light, but can only see the darkness. We have these completely different characters, and I think that is the story trying to tell us something. Something about our potential reaction to the light. Ever sat around a campfire? If you haven't, you should. <laughs> Ever notice what everyone does at some point while sitting around a campfire? They all zone out. They start watching those flames, that light, dance. There's meaning there. And we know it on a deep level. Our memories, our world, our peace of mind is transformed by that flickering flame, that flickering light. That is one reaction to the light. Awe. Now for the other. As many of you know, I get migraines from time to time. And when a migraine hits, I immediately turn into a vampire. If someone dares to open a window to let in light, I'll immediately hiss and pull my elaborate cloak over my eyes to keep myself from being blinded by that terrible light. You might say, that's not a normal reaction. For you, Pastor Adrian, are not, are not normal, and you're right. But how far is that reaction from Herod's reaction when he hears about that new light in the sky? When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. An unknown light appeared in the sky, and there were two reactions. The wise men left everything behind to see what joy awaited them underneath that light. King Herod was filled with fear. There's a movie about lights in the sky. It's called Signs. I told you about this movie from time to time. And watching it as a whole, it's really not a great movie, but it has some great scenes. And I think I've shown you one or two of the scenes over time. But it's starring Mel Gibson. Uh, aliens have come to Earth. And Mel Gibson, a former Catholic priest, is sitting with his brother, Joaquin Phoenix, 
watching the coverage of these alien spacecrafts that are floating in the sky. 14 lights hovering in the sky. They've not landed yet. And Mel Gibson talks about two reactions to those lights. If you want to turn down our lights here, it'll help people see it. Some people are part of the biggest in the world. That's true. Do you think it could be? Yes. How can you say that? That wasn't the answer you wanted. Couldn't you pretend to be like you used to be? <sighs> Give us some comfort. something lucky. Group number one sees it as more than luck. More than coincidence. They see it as a sign. Evidence that there is someone up there watching out for them. Group number two sees it as just pure luck. They had to turn a chance. I'm sure that people in group number two are looking at those 14 lights in a very suspicious way. <laughs> For them, the situation is a 50-50. Could be bad, could be good. But deep down, they feel that whatever happens, they're on their own. And that fills them with fear. Yeah, there are those people. But there's a whole lot of people in the group number one they see those 14 lights, they're looking at a miracle. And deep down, they feel that whatever's going to happen, there'll be someone there to help them. And that fills them with hope. So what you have to ask yourself is what kind of person are you? Are you the kind that sees signs, sees miracles? King Herod, in our gospel, chose fear. Herod, like, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> Herod, like many others, went beyond the 50-50 of could be good, could be bad, and went straight to bad. All to hold on to what? The earthly power that he had? All to remain king? Does anybody know what happened to King Herod? Is he still alive today? <laughs> we generally have a time frame for Jesus' birth. Because we try to line it up with that star. So we generally date him anywhere from being born from 7 BCE to 0. Somewhere in that window, Jesus was born. Anyone want to guess when Herod died? 1 BCE. Choosing darkness over the light, all to at best last six more years. And I'll tell you something very interesting. It's hard because Herod's a historical figure, a person. But his character fits a little too well with our gospel story. According to the first century historian, Josephus, uh, that was the, the only historian we have of that time period that actually talked about Jesus. When he uh, said about Herod's death, Herod, this stand in for darkness in our story, he died directly the day after a lunar eclipse. When darkness won the night, he died. 
we let the darkness in. If we let the darkness win. Many times it will do everything in its power to claim us. <clears throat> Too bad for the darkness that that star broke forth on Christmas morning. And when the star broke forth, many chose to embrace God's indestructible light. When the wise men had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen as, at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child of Mary, his mother. They knelt down and paid him homage. This story of the Bethlehem star is about so much more than astronomy. It's about so much more than history. It's about so much more than some event that happened so many years ago. This story is about the opportunity that's now flying over our heads. An opportunity to walk every day as children of light. Knowing that we are saved by grace Saved because God loved us. And because our saving has been taken care of. And because the difficult darkness has been defeated once and for all. We can now make the decision to choose light every day. Choose hope every day. Choose our neighbor every day. Choose the releasing of guilt and shame and hate and division every day. Choose the release of the darkness that would consume us every day. We can release all of this because this star that broke forth on Christmas morning is not a star for Jesus, but a star for us. We have finally been given the strength, the light, the hope that we need to defeat the darkness in our lives. And it came in a manger on Christmas morning. Amen.